My name is Olivia. Just the other day, I had my wedding with the man I love. The person who became my husband is Ezra, who I dated for three years. We work in different departments at the same company and met through a mutual friend three and a half years ago. We started as friends for six months before starting a romantic relationship. After three years of dating, he proposed to me. Of course, I had always wanted to marry someone I love. So when Ezra proposed to me, I was overjoyed to the point of tears. Ezra is different from me, who is indecisive. He has his own thought. Although he doesn't talk much, he calmly judges things and assesses situations properly. I tend to be indecisive and act on impulse. So he serves as a partner who can hold me back and make me think. Many people attended our wedding. Including our families, relatives, friends, and colleagues, we were blessed by a large number of people and had a happy wedding. I felt so happy that I wish time would stop right there, and I was filled with joy knowing that I could be with Ezra forever. Even after getting married, we both continue working as before. My husband Ezra is busy with his job in the sales department. And there are times when he comes home close to midnight. On the other hand, I mainly do office work, so I can often leave at regular hours. It became a daily routine for me to come home early, prepare dinner, and wait for Ezra to come home. One day, we were having a relaxing breakfast on our day off. Once we settled down a bit more, I want to have children. Yeah, you're right. We should also think about getting our own home. We had such conversations while facing each other and enjoying a delicious breakfast. These simple everyday moments were incredibly happy for me. Little did I know that something like this would happen later. I never even imagined it. After we finished breakfast, when Ezra, my husband, was doing the dishes. Which he usually left to me on weekdays. His phone rang on the table. Your phone's ringing. Ah, I'll call back later. It's fine. He said that, so I didn't pay much attention to it. However, just as I thought the call ended, the phone rang again immediately. The phone is ringing again. I said that and looked at the screen. It showed the name of Ezra's mother. Hey Ezra, it's your mother on the phone. When I told him that, he let out a deep sigh and took the phone answering it. Hello. I could faintly hear his mother's voice through the phone. Wondering what it could be about, I decided to stay quiet until the call ended. However, from time to time, my husband sounded troubled. It's difficult when you spring in a name like this. We already have Vivian, you know. He said such things and seemed to be having some kind of disagreement with his mother. Vivian is Ezra's younger sister and could be considered my sister-in-law. To be honest, I wasn't fond of both my mother-in-law and sister-in-law. It happened when it had been two years since I started dating Ezra, and we went to visit his family. Ezra's father had already passed away, and Ezra had been living alone since he started working. In his family home, his mother and sister lived together. When we visited the family home, both his mother and sister warmly welcomed me at first. I felt slightly relieved, as I had been extremely nervous before, and we spent time together, engaging in casual conversations. As the four of us, however, when Ezra excused himself, saying, "I'll go to the restroom for a moment," and left the table, something changed instantly in the expressions of two people who had been kind and friendly to me until then. Sensing it immediately, I became awkward all of a sudden. While waiting for Ezra to return, Vivian laughed at me and said. With your tacky clothes and nosy makeup, 
Is my brother not embarrassed to marry someone like you? Huh? My sister-in-law sneered at me and said that. In my confusion from the sudden turn of events, Ezra's mother added, "She's right, isn't she? What's good about you? Since you claim to be in a serious relationship, I expected more from you." Saying that, even my mother-in-law belittled me. I couldn't come up with a clever response, and all I could do was hold back tears. Vivian continued laughing loudly. Oh, what's this? Are you about to cry? Both my mom and I were only stating the truth, you know. While laughing, my sister-in-law said that Ezra's mother chimed in as if trying to console me with words that offered no comfort. You got hurt because we spoke the truth, didn't you, Vivian? It's okay for you since you're cute. But there are people who struggle with being unattractive. You shouldn't say such things too often, you know. She said that, pretending to offer some kind of follow-up that didn't provide any solace. I had reached my limit and couldn't bear it any longer. Just then, I heard the sound of the toilet flushing, and it seemed Ezra sensed something. Because the verbal abuse from my mother-in-law and sister-in-law abruptly ceased, Ezra must have sensed something too. Shall we head home soon? With those words, we were able to leave his parents' house right away. While in the car, Ezra asked, "Is something wrong?" He inquired. "No, no, nothing's wrong," I replied in a hurry. It wasn't that I chose not to say anything. I simply couldn't. The shock of not being accepted by the family of someone I loved, an overwhelming feeling of frustration with no outlet. If I were to tell Elsa, it would all come pouring out. However, it seemed that he found my behavior strange. He pulled over the car. Olivia, please tell me what's going on. I'm seriously considering a future with you, Olivia. Looking into my eyes, he said those words earnestly. It sincerely overwhelmed to me, and the tears I had been holding back began to flow. Actually, I said, and proceeded to tell him everything that had happened while he was away at his parents' house. Ezra listened to my story without interruption. I'm so sorry. It's my fault. If we get married, let's cut ties with my family. She said those words to me. Since then, Ezra never mentioned his family, and he never took me to visit them. So apart from that moment and our wedding, I hadn't seen his mother or sister. I thought this kind of relationship would continue in the future. Just then. My husband received a call from his mother. After a phone call that lasted about ten minutes, my husband hung up. His expression wasn't cheerful, and I sensed that it wasn't good news. Ezra, are you okay? I asked, and he responded, "My mom suggested that she wants to live with us." Huh? My mind went blank. His mother. Who seemed to dislike me so much, proposing to live together? What on earth is happening? As I was thinking about that, you wouldn't want to live together, right, Olivia? I don't want to see you sad. He said that to me. In response, I honestly replied, "Yeah, honestly, I'm scared of living together too." However, from that day on. We started receiving persistent phone calls from my mother-in-law to both my and Ezra's phones. Ignoring them didn't make a difference. The calls would keep ringing until we answered. Of course, she's my mother-in-law, so I couldn't reject the calls. Once we answered, it would go on for at least thirty minutes. I could only silently listen to her talk, and I could only tell Ezra, 
I received another call today. That's all I could do. But even so, Ezra, protecting me from his mother's insistence, and repeatedly turned down the idea of living together. However, due to the phone calls from my mother-in-law, it started affecting our work. My husband's job required him to be constantly attentive to phone calls, and having his mother's calls mixed in became a significant nuisance. Of course, even though I worked in an office job, it was tiresome to see dozens of missed calls every time I checked my phone during breaks. I couldn't let it go on like this. With that thought in mind, I proposed to Ezra that we visit his parents' house and have a proper discussion. Are you sure about this, Olivia? You don't have to come to my parents' place if you don't want to. Ezra expressed his concern. I'll be fine. I reassured him, and we decided to visit his parents' house on our next day off. And finally, the day arrived. As we rang the intercom at his parents' house, my mother-in-law came out from the front door. Upon seeing my face, tears welled up in her eyes. Olivia, I'm truly sorry for what happened back then," she said, lowering her head deeply in apology. I was taken aback by this unexpected gesture, and Ezra, beside me, seemed equally surprised. Please lift your head, mother-in-law," I said. "But it's true that I hurt you. I really wanted to apologize," she repeatedly apologized. Her voice choked with tears. At that moment, I said, "Mother-in-law, why did you suddenly suggest living together?" I asked the question that had been on my mind all along. Then, Vivian. You know, she might get married soon, and I feel anxious about living alone in this house," she said, shedding more tears. Seeing her in that state, it pained my heart as well. Hey, Ezra, let's live together. Huh? But I'll be fine. Saying that, I made the decision to live together, trusting that my mother-in-law had truly changed. However, as expected, living together was not what I had imagined. My mother-in-law and sister-in-law were kind only on the day of the move. From the next day onwards, I experienced the same oppressive days as before. As Ezra, who worked in sales, left the home earlier than me, I would hang the laundry after seeing him off. That's when my mother-in-law approached me and said. Your way of doing this is different from ours. Let's start over. With those words, she threw all the laundry I had hung onto the ground, and it wasn't just my mother-in-law. My sister-in-law joined in as well. Regarding the dishes I prepared, my mother-in-law commented, "I can't eat this terrible food," and proceeded to throw it in the trash. I endured such cruel treatment repeatedly. While enduring this kind of harassment, whenever I tried to talk to them, both of them completely ignored me. I was treated as if I didn't exist. However, even though I experienced this kind of mistreatment, I remained silent and endured. After all, it was my own decision to live together, despite Ezra's concerns. If I had spoken up, perhaps something would have changed. But I was so busy with work, coming home exhausted every day, that I couldn't find the opportunity to talk Ezra. On one particular holiday, my sister-in-law revealed her true colors even in front of my husband. I'm getting married, but please don't come to the wedding, sister-in-law. Even though my husband was present. She said that to me. Of course, Ezra immediately responded. Hey, what are you saying? Olivia is your sister-in-law, isn't she? He got angry and defended me. However, my sister-in-law laughed triumphantly and said, "I've told him that 
you are our housekeeper. It would be embarrassing if the housekeeper attended the wedding, right? Plus, you are ugly, sister-in-law. I don't want people to think we're related. She said that. In that moment, I felt a boiling anger rising within me. I had endured silently until now, but even when my husband scolded her, she maintained this attitude. Ah. These people really have no intention of changing their behavior. That's when I became convinced. To make matters worse, even my mother-in-law joined in. Well, yes, it would be undesirable for someone like Olivia to be considered a part of our family. Let's have her stay home and take care of things. She smiled warmly and said that. Cut it out! Apologize to Olivia. Despite Ezra's anger, they completely ignored him. In response to Ezra's frustration, "It's okay, Ezra. I won't attend." I informed him. But it's really fine. The bride is the main focus of the wedding, right? It wouldn't be good for me to attend and disrupt the atmosphere. I said, calming Ezra's anger. Of course, that wasn't how I truly felt. In fact, I never wanted to participate in the first place. So when my sister-in-law suggested my participation, I actually thought it was a stroke of luck. In reality, if my sister-in-law got married and moved out, it would reduce half of my stress. Considering that, I thought it wasn't a big deal to miss the wedding. My sister-in-law planned to register her marriage on the day after the wedding. She intended to stay near the venue with her fiance on the night before the wedding, so it would be an evening with my mother-in-law Ezra and me. My mother-in-law emphasized to me, "You must not come tomorrow," she said, making sure I understood. "Yes, don't worry, I won't go." When I said that, she smiled with satisfaction. The next day, my husband and mother-in-law headed to the wedding venue together. After seeing them off, I had plans of my own, so I started getting ready to leave the house. I killed time, as instructed by someone at the cafe near the venue. When about two hours into the ceremony, I received a message asking me to come to the venue. I headed to the venue as instructed and made my way to the bride's waiting room, where I had been told to go in advance. I knocked and opened the door, and there was my sister-in-law in the middle of her outfit change. My mother-in-law was also there. Upon seeing my face, my sister-in-law frowned and yelled, "Hey, why is my sister-in-law here? Didn't I tell you not to come?" She shouted angrily. My mother-in-law chimed in, "Behave and stay put. You're out of place here. Leave immediately," she said. Then the waiting room door swung open with force, and Vivian's fiance entered the room. "What the hell's going on here?" he said, stepping into the room. "Huh? Why?" My sister-in-law was clearly shaken. The person you said was a housemaid turned out to be your sister-in-law. You're despicable. No, no, it's not like that. There's a reason for this. In an attempt to deceive, my sister-in-law said, but her fiance responded, "It's useless to try to cover it up." He said and took out a voice recorder. When he pressed the play button. What came out was the sound of my mother-in-law and sister-in-law verbally bullying me, as they usually did. Why do you have that? The face of my mother-in-law and sister-in-law grew paler and paler. However, at some point, my sister-in-law seemed to realize something and glared at me intensely. You're the one behind this, aren't you? You wicked woman! She said and attempted to attack me, but it was my husband who stopped her. Huh, big brother? My sister-in-law looked perplexed. In response, my husband said, "I recorded it and gave it to your fiance. It was me. 
He said so. Actually, the night before, my husband told me before going to bed, for tomorrow's wedding, I want you to come to the venue when I contact you. Until then, please wait nearby. That's what he said to me. Both waiting at the cafe and heading to the waiting room at the venue, all of it was under the instructions of my husband Ezra. I had no idea that Ezra had such intentions, but I was happy to realize that Ezra had taken action, considering me so much. Whoa! Why would you do this? My sister-in-law trembled and stammered. You too have hurt someone dear to me so much. I won't forgive you. I'll serve you all ties. My husband said so. Following that, her fiance also spoke. I can't marry someone as despicable as you. Let's pretend the wedding never happened, he said and left the room. Wait! My sister-in-law hurriedly said that and chased after her, followed by my mother-in-law chasing after her. The staff members looked puzzled, but my husband and I found it amusing and burst into laughter right there. Well then, let's go home. My husband said that and held my hand. According to my husband, he had already signed a contract for a new apartment. And he told me that we could start living there from today. We went back to my in-laws' house once to gather our belongings and headed to our new home. Since moving, my mother-in-law and sister-in-law have been constantly contacting us. But my husband said, "We've cut ties, so it's fine," and he blocked their calls. I followed suit. Since then. My husband and I have no contact with my in-laws. According to rumors, my jilted sister-in-law has become self-destructive, taking out her frustration on my mother-in-law and leading a miserable life. In our new home, we started a new life, and after a while, we conceived a child. I am currently on maternity leave. I hope that my beloved husband. A precious unborn child, and I can live happily from now on.